Hello and welcome to another edition of Ontology Talk. I'm Adam Pease and today I want to talk about coffee, uh, specifically espresso coffee. And this video is indeed more about coffee than it is about ontology. Um, so what I'm going to do is show you uh, my uh, espresso setup, but also I'm going to show at the same time concepts from my Sumo ontology as displayed in the Sigma browser and give you the links so that you can follow up to them. And then in future videos, uh, I'll concentrate more on the ontology of coffee and less on the how to make coffee aspect. So enjoy. So I have a La Spaziale Mini Vivaldi 2 espresso maker. Uh, I looked into lots of different espresso makers, had a few cheap ones before this. Uh, this seems to be the best compromise. You know, it's not the most expensive, it's not the most fancy, but it's a sort of solid Italian workhorse that's been around for a very long time. Um, and it, it does just fine. Uh, so here I'm just uh, kind of getting ready. Uh, I've got to clear some space for to put the uh, filter basket in place. Not too hard. You don't need a lot of force to do it. Uh, you have to press the on button for three seconds to start up this machine. Uh, you notice I got the cups on the top of the machine. It has a built-in warming function so that uh, you can have your cups nice and warm before you get pouring any espresso into them. So I start out usually by uh, purging the machine, getting any water that's in the pipes out of there. Also, it kind of cleans the filter basket, uh, makes sure it's all nice and warm because you want it to be very warm. I usually let it, the machine warm up for um, half an hour, ideally. So here I am going to measure out uh, beans. Uh, we do roast our own beans at home, and that was a big improvement. I'll do a separate video about that. I found that uh, I get just the most consistent results by measuring out the beans before grinding them. The grinder that I have, I'll show you in a moment, does have a timer. Um, there are lots of different methods for trying to get consistent results, but this is a way I found that was consistent for me. And it's also relatively cheap in terms of the equipment. I mean, you can get all sorts of fancy stuff, uh, especially if you get you know, scales built into the machine. I generally weigh out 17 grams of beans for one double shot espresso. So I've got a Sete uh, 270 uh, conical burr grinder, makes really nice grounds. Uh, it does spray grounds everywhere. Uh, so you see here I've got a little basket extender that goes on the top. Just so make sure that all the grinds uh, go into the basket and not all are over the counter as they would otherwise if you just actually use the little rest that you see there. Um, so it makes for nice fluffy grounds. So once uh, the grounds are in the basket, you kind of uh, shake it down to settle them. Uh, I do use a leveler, which you're seeing here. Uh, you have the ability to set the depth of the leveler by, uh, you know, if you can adjust it, screw it around a little bit. Um, I have it already pre-adjusted here. Uh, I'm tamping and you need to tamp down your grounds uh, so that you get good flow of the water through the espresso. I've, I've done some research, it doesn't seem to matter exactly how much force you use uh, in order to do that. So I've now attached the filter back to the machine, it has the espresso in it. I've got a cheap little micro scale here so I can also weigh the amount of uh, coffee liquid that comes out of the machine and also has a timer. So I reset uh, the weight to include the cup and give it a start. Now you don't see my left hand there actually starting the machine. I mean, this machine uh, will do timed dispensing of the espresso, uh, but uh, I found that's just not as accurate uh, as timing it myself. Uh, you also notice the espresso, there's a gauge uh, here in the photo. You can see the needle wiggling around a little bit. Uh, so espresso will start coming out when it reaches about 8 atmospheres of pressure, 8 bars. Um, and I'm going to wait here for a little over 30 seconds. I'm aiming for 35 grams out. So it was 17 grams of beans in and about 35 grams out. And that takes, uh, ideally I've got it everything set so that it's about uh, 30 seconds, maybe a little more. Here I'm just purging the steam wand so I can make some frothy milk. 
Um, still not very good at the frothy milk. You'll see kind of my results in a minute. Um, it also seems to depend, depend on what milk I happen to have in a given week. For a while it was going really, really well. I don't know if now the cows are uh, producing less fatty milk for our local, local supermarket milk. Um, it's not working out quite as well. So you want to get this cycling of the milk around. You want to hear a little bit of this sort of tearing paper sound where the steam wand is just at the top of the, the level of the milk. You want it uh, swirling around so that the big bubbles pop and just the little bubbles stick around. Uh, hold your finger up next to it to see uh, when it's getting hot. And if you can't hold your finger on it, then it's about time to stop within a few more seconds. Um, really important to clean your steam wand uh, immediately or the milk will get caked on. So I will clean it and then purge it a couple of times. And now we're ready to pour some milk, some frothed milk, into the espresso. I've got a nice little cappuccino cup here. Um, so it's about the right size to make the proportions right if I fill it all the way up. Uh, you start off uh, trying to pour from a high level and then once it gets mixed in you bring the cup down so that it's easier for the little bubbles in the milk to float on top of the coffee and here I'm trying to make a sort of tulip figure uh, not very attractive pretty much a, a fail on my latte art um, but uh, it does fortunately still taste good so hopefully I'll find some right milk or get better technique you know I'm certainly not a pro at this uh, there are people that do it better I'm just trying to tell you my process here uh, now that I've poured my shot, uh, I can clean it out. So I've got a uh, uh, disposal basket there. Uh, I always purge the group head here by running a little hot water through it and uh, wiping off any coffee grounds that might have stuck to the top. Um, and then just turn off the machine. So I clean the filter basket. Uh, here I uh, use an old screwdriver just to pry out the filter basket. I mean, it's pretty tight in there, so you really need some kind of tool. There are specialized tools for this, but uh, I, uh, an, old, an old screwdriver works just fine. Uh, cleaning is really, really important. I mean, obviously you need to clean the filter basket every time, uh, but doing things like purging the group head both before and after uh, really helps. Uh, initially, no one had told me that you could actually take off this little part on the filter basket, clean things more thoroughly. Um, uh, so once I did that, that helped make things a bit cleaner too. Uh, of course, it's going to be very hot. Be careful uh, after you uh, do this whole process. So I'm running it under some lukewarm water here to uh, make it possible for me to clean it. Uh, the other thing I do uh, every time is uh, clean the drip tray. Uh, so I just rinse it. Uh, it doesn't take much more than that because it's a pretty dilute liquid that gets in there. Um, but just rinsing it every time helps keep things clean. It only takes a moment. So that's uh, about it. Uh, uh, I, each time you may need to uh, fill up the water reservoir. I just use filtered water from a Brita water filter. Um, the water that we get out of the tap is actually pretty good, but that filtering uh, helps a little bit, makes the taste a little bit nicer. I mean, some people go kind of nuts on, on water, but uh, this seems to work just fine for us. Here I'm replacing the filter tray. It's a little tricky. You have to lift up the water basket uh, when you put in the tray. And so that's uh, about it. That's my daily process for doing espresso. Uh, hope you found this interesting. If you are an ontologist who likes coffee, uh, hopefully this uh, gave you some tips on uh, making espresso and possibly what equipment to get. I'll include uh, some links below for all the equipment that I use. And uh, in a future video, we'll go on to the next step of trying to create an ontology of coffee that corresponds to my equipment in this process. So you'll have an, an example along with the other examples on this channel uh, of how one builds an ontology to capture the semantics of a particular domain. Thanks for watching.